check the soundboard. It's Monday! Hi hi! Genki Call here, and we have in the Soul Forge this week four legendaries that are okay-ish. We've got the Infernal King and Sekma, who are both double mana converters. Um, they both... Oh, this one, the Infernal King converts green gems to skulls and brown gems to red, plus deals some scatter damage. He has a 25% chance to resurrect after death, and he does, he can burn enemies when you do skull damage, or when he does skull damage, but he has no skull damage reduction, meaning he's not great to have at the front of the team, in my opinion. Um, also, we have Sekma, who transforms blue gems to skulls and brown gems to yellow, deals damage to an enemy boosted by all other allies' magic with a 2 to 1 ratio, and she gains two magic on red gem matches, so every time you match red gems, this purple number is going up, which is cool. And Raksha gained two life, allied Raksha. So, uh, Matron Dragatani is one that I haven't used much. She does create six blue gems boosted by frozen enemies with a times two boost ratio, so maybe good to use with Queen Mab. Um, then she deals damage to the first and last enemies boosted by blue gems. She has a 75% spell damage reduction, which makes her really hard to fight if you're not using skulls. Um, she has a 25% chance to summon a dragonette on death and immunity to burning and fairy fire. Then we have the orrery. The orrery destroys a row and a column deals damage to all enemies boosted by purple and yellow gems destroyed with a times two boost ratio. Now the reason it's purple and yellow specifically is because his third trait, its third trait, is to conjure a star storm which is purple and yellow. So we've got a dark storm and a light storm at the same time. It counts as both. So if you have a troop that requires a, a light storm such as finesse, and you don't want to use Stormcaller, you can use the Orrery and still have that Star Storm, for instance. Um, now, as far as the um, these four legendaries go, do I recommend crafting them? No, I don't. Um, the Infernal King is in the drop table for event keys this week, and so you may be able to get it with event keys if you want it. Um, just 800 diamonds in the grand scope of things unless it's something you desperately want or is it something that you need to get your um, power level in a kingdom up I would not recommend crafting legendaries usually as far as the mythics we've got here we've got Tianyi um, I don't recommend crafting it, but I think he's a lot of fun to play with. He does heavy splash damage, which is damage to a troop, and then the adjacent tro troops get 75% of that damage. And then he stuns all affected enemies, which is basically the whole opposite team, which I really like. That means that they lose their traits, these things over here. Um, deal double damage if my attack is greater. So that is where his strength lies. Is If you can get a way to get his attack up, and I have a way to do that, then you are going to do double damage with this splash damage. Uh, damage. And plus he summons one to three monkey disciples, which will feed him mana and heal the team as well. So he's got a 20% chance to dodge skull damage and he steals two magic from the first enemy at the start of the turn on every single turn and he has gem enemy gem masteries now this is a mythic that i pulled just randomly i think he's a lot of fun i will i do have a video out um, with the team that i used and i'll try to do a uh, mythic spotlight on tian yi this week uh, with maybe some other teams as well, but I will put a link to the Tianyi team in the description box below so you can check that out. Then we've got Shibanu Vespera, who is amazing with a triple finesse team. Actually, with a double finesse team, the Doomed Axe and Shibanu Vespera, she is amazing. So what she's going to do is give 
um, give some magic, or actually give, I'm just going to say 16. For me, it's 16. 16 to a random skill on an ally, create 9 gems of their mana color, which is why you want to use only blue, only purple, or only yellow with her. Um, and then repeat two more times for random allies. So you cast on something, you get to choose which one is going to get the boost. And then she's going to do that two more times. And she could do it on herself, but usually it's going to be the other troops. I really have a lot of fun with her. These traits are absolutely terrible, except for immunity to death mark is nice. Um, but especially this, this uh, the djinn summons is pretty useless but anyway I will I've got plenty of videos showcasing Shabanu with the finesse team I'll see if I can find one to put in the description box until I can do a mythic spotlight on her uh, also we have got Ishtara in here and Ishtara does damage to all enemies create nine yellow gems boosted by blessed allies and she has a 50% chance to bless a random ally when the turn begins, which, of course, makes this more powerful, more yellow gems. Also, she has skull damage reduction by 40%, and all allies gain two random skill points. Um, of the mythics that we have in here that can be crafted, there are only three this week. Um, so the rest of these are always here. Wait, no, Kurandara isn't always here. My bad, I didn't even notice Kurandara sitting here. I like Kurandara. So Kurandara was the first mythic we received from the very first campaign. If you bought that pass, you got Kurandara. I was one of those people that bought that first pass, and so I got this troop. So Kurandara is fun for a couple reasons to me. So deal damage to an enemy boosted by Doom Skulls, then convert yellow gems to Doom Skulls and conjure a Doom Storm. So the thing I really like is converting yellow gems to Doom Skulls. That's what makes his spell powerful. As for his traits, he is really good to use with High King Iron Gut because there is a 50% chance to curse all enemies when matching four plus gems. So. That makes it so that High King Iron Gut can devour things that are immune to de to um, to devour, and also any positive status effects that your enemies might have go away as soon as they get cursed. So if they're submerged, if they're barriered, whatever it is, it goes away just like the banishment uh, talent on some of the classes. So I like Kurandara. I think it's a really good to me. It's a very useful mythic. So, of these, um, of these mythics that we've got here, I wouldn't recommend Tiani unless you just really need him or you just love the idea of playing with him. Uh, Shibanu, I find very useful. Kurandara, I use all the time with High King Iron Gut just for that third trait of his. And Ishtara, I've used a couple times. Ishtara is good for events I've noticed and I really need to play with her some more I didn't get her when she was released I managed to get her on a random drop later on and so I haven't actually played with her much um, would I recommend any of these it depends on your play style really um, I enjoy uh, if I had to re recommend one it would be either Shibanu or Kurindara based upon what your goals are in the in the game so, if you're wanting to use the passive traits with Kurandara, if you love the idea of the Doom Skulls, or with Shibanu, if you want to have a massively powerful finesse team. Um, also, there's another team as well, but I'll get to that in the Mythic Spotlight. Anyway, so, as always, it's up to you what what your goals are but 4,000 diamonds is a lot they're very hard to get well it takes a long time to accumulate 4,000 diamonds so um, we have a new mythic cycle starting very soon within the next couple of weeks so if there is a mythic that you really really want I would recommend saving your diamonds at this point nothing here is a must-have 
Shibano is fun, Kurandara is useful, but there are other troops that can fill those needs if um, if you want an alternative, there are alternatives. As for weapons, I haven't looked at these yet. Uh, we've got the fire staff. Oh, it's one of these. So 75 diamonds is really cheap for a weapon. Um, damage to an enemy, deal double damage if there's a firestorm, and it creates a firestorm. So that's kind of cool. Uh, if you need a weapon for Blighted Lands, if you are blocked from going up a power level in Blighted Lands because of a weapon, 75 diamonds is pretty cheap in order to get that done. I'm actually going to consider this, maybe. I mean, I'd rather have my Firestorm from my class or perhaps from Tink Steam Whistle if needed. But um, for 75 diamonds, I will keep that in mind. There could be a use for it for me, maybe. Death Spire. 18 damage to all enemies boosted by enemy towers. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what the upgrades are. Damage to all enemies, boosted by enemy towers. With a times eight boost ratio? Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that's a lot of damage. What colors? Purple and brown. Oh gosh, I'm really low on diamonds. Well, I'm not low, low, but I use them. I've been a little too free with my diamonds lately, but I am definitely going to keep this in mind, especially since Leona's Tower is a thing for PvP now. There could be more towers coming that users, we, we users can have on our teams, and that might make this weapon pretty useful. So I'm going to keep that one in my mind. Soul Reaper. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by Blighted Lands allies with a boost ratio of times six, then create a mix of six red and purple gems for each Blighted Lands ally. Red and purple. So red and yellow I know we use a lot. Let's look at red and purple really quickly here. Blighted Lands, all kingdoms. Doop, doop, doop. Blighted Lands. And then I said red and purple. So, Baphomet, Infernal King, Nocturnia, do, 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 do. Uh, what was it, brown and purple? Was it brown and purple? Oh my goodness. My memory, I swear. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Let me look at that again. Whoops, weapons. Soul Reaper. Red and purple. Okay, so I'm not losing my mind. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> Sorry. Red and purple. Blighted lands. Let's go back and see this again. So, there are a lot of troops that would benefit from this, but how often do I use blighted lands troops specifically? It would be good for the uh, Underworld, for the faction of Fel Roost, I see. Nocturnia is awesome. Uh, I think, though, personally, I'm going to give this weapon a pass for now. I will grab it next time um, Blighted Lands comes around, if I decide it's something I have to have. Right now, it's not. And I could get into the world event and say, hey, wait, that would be really useful. But right this second, it's a n not right this now. So the Scythe of the Blight. Oh, it's another 75 diamond one. That's weird. Remove all red gems with no effect. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by gems removed. Okay. Uh, with a 3 to 1 ratio, so if you remove 9, it's only going to do 3 extra damage. If the enemies from Blighted Lands deal double damage. So this is one of the ones that puts me off because it removes gems with or it removes gems with no effect except to boost the spell. And that kind of puts me off a little bit. It's a personal thing. It's just one of those things that makes me go, eh, eh. We've got the Doomed Staff in here, which I obviously have crafted previously. I think I actually got it when it was first released in the Tower event, the Tower of Doom event. Create four yellow gems, plus one per tempering level. Give 
armor to all red allies and if the enemy has a doom eliminate all armor from the random enemy as usual I can show you the upgrades for this since I already have it but uh, create yellow gems it's a red weapon I don't know you'd have to well I will look at it further I've never used it let me grab my tributes real quickly here do, 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 do. troops weapon doomed staff all right attack life magic attack magic gain one magic deal five scatter damage give one mana to all allies create a firestorm and drain two mana from red enemies so it seems like something that would be good to use on red attack day for guild wars beyond that i'm not real sure but um you know i'll take another look at it is it exciting i prefer the doomed weapons that um call uh create doom skulls or transform to doom skulls those are my favorites but you know i'll look at these other ones at some point um in the meantime that is what i have for you for the soul forge i will get to work on the world event video and please like and subscribe and we'll see you soon Bye bye